Hey Savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here and today we'll be installing Power Toys on Windows. I'm here on the GitHub page of Power Toys by Microsoft, which helps add some nice utilities to Windows 10 and of course is an open source project here on GitHub developed by Microsoft. So let's first explore what these utilities have to offer us. If we scroll down to the middle of the page, we have the various different tools available. A color picker allows you to choose any color on the screen. Fancy zones allows you to manage windows on your screen and allows you to create your own custom layouts for windows. There's some miscellaneous file explorer add-ons and image resizer. Keyboard manager, which is something I really enjoy using because I like to remap my keys here in windows anyway. So instead of doing it through something like the registry, I can use this tool instead. We have Power Rename, Power Toys Run, another one of those that I really enjoy using, similar to what you would find in a Mac OS with Spotlight, a shortcut guide, and a video conference mute, a mute all button. All right, let's get started installing by going down to the requirements and checking. So first we need to check if we have a Windows 10 17 134 build or later. We can check this fairly easily by going down to the search bar, typing in about and pressing enter. That will bring up a dialogue like this. And in the about section, we have our window specifications. It tells us the version number and the OS build number. So both of these numbers are in fact larger than what's suggested by the page. So we're all good to install Power Toys. Next, we can install the Power Toys by clicking on the GitHub releases page and running an executable. On the releases page, we have the latest release. As of right now, it's version 0.25. Of course, if you're going through and following this at a later date, you might have a newer release version. You don't have to go with this one, but the install process will be similar. So clicking on release, and then after we load the new page here, and if you're new and stopping by to watch this video today, make sure to subscribe below and hit that notification bell for more operating system and programming videos. Scrolling down in the release page, we'll see that we get to the very bottom where we can actually select an asset as they call it. What we want is the Power Toys setup executable file. Now this is for a 64-bit computer and that's denoted by this x64 here. The rest of the files are source code and we don't need that. We don't want to build it ourselves. We want to just run the installer. So this first option works. Let's click that, save the file, and let it finish downloading. After things finish downloading, go to your downloads folder, select the Power Toys setup, and let it begin. The first thing it'll do is it says it will install the .NET Framework 3.1.6 for you. And this is necessary in order to run Power Toys. We'll give this app administrator privileges and let that download. Now, for some reason, the package doesn't download it and install the .NET Framework itself. You can, of course, get it from online and install it so that you have it. Following that, we can set up Power Toys. This is the preview version because there hasn't been an official stable release quite yet, but there will be in the future. We'll select the next button to start the install. We go through the license information. If you're all okay with that, you can hit the next button. Now we're asked where we want to install Power Toys. The C program files Power Toys directory works great for me. And you can select between creating a shortcut on your desktop, that way you can launch it from your desktop, and or automatically start it when your system starts up and you log in as your user. I'm going to keep the defaults here and hit next. Finally, it says Power Toys is ready to begin installing and we'll hit the install button. We're required again to give administrative privileges. I'm gonna hit or yes, and it will take just a few moments to finish up the installation. Once things are done here, we'll get the finish button and this little dialog will say installation complete. We can minimize this by hitting the arrow and let's launch Power Toys so we can check it out. And if you went ahead and made it this far, please hit the like button for me. It really does help me out. All right, in your search, now you can look for Power Toys and see if we can find it here. 
And sure enough, if I type in Power Toys, I see this Power Toys preview application. Again, this is the preview version and it's not a completely stable release. The dev team is still making updates, trying to get things to become stable. So there might be small bugs here and there, but you can always turn off and or disable Power Toys. Let's click on it and launch it. And you'll see that in the bottom right hand corner in the taskbar, there's a Power Toys. If I click on that, that will launch the console and dialogue for Power Toys. And now we can get a good understanding of what's all in here. Let's do a quick overview. And one thing I'll mention is that under normal conditions, you'll be running this program as the current user. And in order to reach most of the settings, you'll actually have to restart the program as an administrator. It does have a button right here for that. So let's do that and hit yes to run it as an administrator. Now the app itself isn't restarting. Instead, it's in the taskbar. So you might have to hit the arrow on the taskbar to actually see the app. Click on that and it will rerun. And this time we can see that it's being ran as an administrator. All right, so let's check out our new utilities that have been installed by Power Toys. On the left hand side, we have our color picker. So as soon as we hit Win Shift C, now we get this nice little color picker, which allows us to go through any section of the screen and it tells us the color in a specific color representation. So currently it's set to hex here. You can change this up according to what you're using. Moving down to fancy zones, we can enable fancy zones by hitting win and the tick key. And that allows you to set up a layout and start using fancy zones. File Explorer turns on or off certain previews that are extensions to the File Explorer. Image Resizer gives you various different abilities to resize images on the fly here. The Keyboard Manager, again, one of my favorites. You can remap keys or remap a shortcut if necessary. And just so you know, up on the top of every one of these different utilities, you have whether or not you want to enable this feature or disable it. Of course, if you don't like using one of these, make sure to disable it because it's just going to take up unnecessary space and resources being on. Moving over to Power Rename, this helps you with bulk renaming of multiple different items. Currently the maximum number of items set is 10. Power Toys Run creates a nice little launcher that allows you to search inside of it. So as we can see on the right hand side, if we press Alt Space, we can now start typing and looking for something on the system. So I typed in Power and it's making a few suggestions and I can click on the various different options or simply use my mouse to go up and down through the selection. Again, I like this because it's very similar to what you would find on Mac OS with Spotlight, great tool. And finally, the shortcut guide allows you to see all the various different shortcuts currently available with the Windows key. And all you have to do is hold down your Windows key and things will pop right up as far as shortcuts. So now if I held down the Windows key and press A, that would open the Action Center and so on and so forth. There's plenty of these. We won't go through them all. And as soon as you let go, the shortcut keys disappear from the screen. Well, I hope you have fun using your new Power Toys utilities on your Windows 10 computer. Again, it's a great open source project which offers a bunch of utilities that in my opinion are very necessary in Windows as well as most operating systems. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please make sure to post them in the comments section below. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.